Good evening. Welcome to Blessed Sacrament. Today we're celebrating the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our gathering song is All the Earth, number 429. Please rise, greet each other, and prepare to sing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Father. In today's reading from the letter to the Hebrews, we are charged to rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us. With this in mind, let us ask for God's healing and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Lord, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace. Christ, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God. Lord, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O oh God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet, the book of the prophet Jeremiah. In those days, the princes said to the king, Jeremiah ought to be put to death. He is demoralizing the soldiers who are left in this city and all the people by speaking such things to them. He is not interested in the welfare of our people, but in their ruin. King Zedekiah answered, he is in your power, for the king could do nothing with them. And so they took Jeremiah and threw him into the cistern, cistern of Prince Malachiah, which was in the quarters of the guard, letting him down with ropes. There was no water in the cistern, cistern only mud, and Jeremiah sank into the mud. ebed Melech a court official, went there from the palace and said to him, My lord king, these men have been at fault in all that they have done to the prophet Jeremiah, casting him into the cistern. He will die of famine on the spot, for there is no more food in the city. Then the, the king ordered ebed Malak the Cushite, to take three men along with him and draw the prophet Jeremiah out of the cistern before he should die. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us rid ourselves of every burden and sin that clings to us and persevere in running the race that lies before us while keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the leader and perfecter of faith. For the sake of the joy that lay before him, he endured the, cr the cross, despising its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider how he endured such opposition from sinners in order that you may not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire, and how I wish it were already blazing. There is a baptism with which I must be baptized, and how great is my anguish until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to establish peace on the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and a son against his father, a mother against her daughter and a daughter against her mother, a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. You, the parish secretary once placed a note in the Sunday bulletin which read as follows. Barbara remains in the hospital and needs blood donors for more transfusions. She's also having trouble sleeping and requests tapes of Father John's sermons. <laughs> Poor Father John. The lesson we gather from the readings today is that sometimes in our own lives, the truth hurts, like with Father John in his sermons. It can ruffle feathers. Jeremiah the prophet is an interesting man. Uh, as you can see, he had kind of a bad day in the uh, first reading today. So if you ever had a bad day, think of Jeremiah. It, uh, his, was, his was worse. But he ruffled a lot of feathers in his lifetime. He was born about the year 650 B.C. near Jerusalem. He preached to the people north of Jerusalem during the reign of the good king Josiah. And after Josiah died, God's chosen people began to resort back to the same sin that kept creeping in uh, generation after generation, and that was idolatry, the worship of false gods and images. 
Jeremiah opposed this with all his strength. He was basically telling them, you better stop doing this and turn back to the Lord or you're going to be sorry. He could see the writing on the wall. And because of this, he was imprisoned, he was arrested, he was publicly disgraced. And then in fulfillment of Jeremiah's prophecy, the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, destroyed Jerusalem in 587 BC, and most of the citizens were sent into exile. Jeremiah stayed among the ruins of Jerusalem for a while. Indeed, Jeremiah's words upset many of his own people. And that's where we find ourselves in the first reading today. Some of the princes said to the king, Jeremiah ought to be put to death. He's demoralizing the soldiers who are left in this city. And then soon he was forced into exile, fleeing to Egypt, um, where, according to tradition, he was killed by his own exiled countrymen, the people that he was trying to help. Here in the, today's reading, the princes have had enough of him, and they want to throw him into a dried-up well. They don't want to draw blood, but because they realize he's a prophet, and so they plan on killing him gently. But Jeremiah doesn't die. His time had not yet come. He was saved by a member of the court. Notice the court princes claim that Jeremiah was demoralizing the soldiers. You know, if that would be true, it wouldn't be a totally bad accusation. But the truth is that he wasn't demoralizing or corrupting the soldiers, but he was moralizing them. He was telling them that they need once again to turn to God. But the soldiers had their own agenda. They didn't want to be bothered by God. But Jeremiah did all that he could. And I have a feeling I know why the soldiers didn't like Jeremiah. It was because he pricked their consciences. They knew their hearts were not really set on God, and they persisted in their own selfishness. The prophet Jeremiah spoke the truth. And that's one quality of a prophet sent by God, that they speak the truth, and what they prophesy then comes true. And it did for Jeremiah. Judah fell, just as he prophesied. And many people didn't like the truth that he spoke. Now, if you don't believe the truth can ruffle feathers, place a copy of the Ten Commandments in public and see what happens. Maybe it's a good examination of conscience and reminds us of our own imperfections. Even among families, sometimes the truth can ruffle feathers. The truth can divide people. Jesus talks about family division in the gospel today. He says, from now on, a household of five will be divided three against two and two against three. A father will be divided against his son and a son against his father, mother against daughter, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, etc. So he's saying that there's going to be friction in the family unit. Uh, I don't know exactly how many families I've seen this in, but there are many families that I personally have noticed in my 30 years as a priest who, after having grown up together, refuse even to talk to each other. That's what I call division. Now, some division in families can be avoided, and it's certainly not acceptable. For example, self-centered desires and intentionally excluding other members of the family from family events. But some other division cannot be avoided. I know one person from a family who's been shunned because he joined the church, and that's the division that Jesus is talking about. He does not wish families to be divided, but it's inevitable when some people refuse to accept Jesus, and others do. And if you find yourself, or if I find myself, or know someone whose family members have turned against them, you're not the only one. Jeremiah, in the first reading today, can empathize with you. Even his own family turned against him. The church believes that these good prophets are in heaven. So if you have family problems, you can ask Jeremiah's intercession to pray for you. He knows your pain. So now the question then kind of boils down to, did Jesus really say that he wanted to cause division in families? It sounds kind of different 
It sounds kind of odd for Jesus to say that in the gospel. It seems contrary to the essence of who Jesus is. After all, Jesus and the Father and the Spirit are one. They are united. They're not divided. So what is Jesus talking about here? Did Jesus make a mistake? Is the gospel wrong? Of course it's not. Jesus did not make a mistake. He's talking about division as a foreseen side effect in our fallen world toward the goal of peace. And again, we must remember what Jesus said on the topic of peace and division at the Last Supper before he died in the Gospel of John. Jesus says, I pray that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. May they be one as we are one, I in them and you in me that they may be brought to perfection as one. So Jesus is very much in favor of peace. But this peace will not be brought to perfection here on earth. And so may we in our lives turn from anything which leads us away from God and his love, including any and all forms of you know, idolatry, worship of anything that is not God, not keeping God first. May we seek to to know the truth about us, whether it be good or bad. And with the help of God, seek to change the bad so we may be more like Christ. May the division which exists in society and families eventually, with the help of God, melt into peace. And together we make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Today's readings remind us of the reality of division in our world. With this, we pray for a unity that comes only from God and raise our prayers in confidence. That all the members of the Church might work together for the kingdom of God that unify. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. that government leaders may seek nonviolent responses to the disunity that may arise among their own people and with people of other nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our local community might daily set aside differences so to walk 
and work with unity and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That efforts at Eucharistic revival would increase the gift of faith in the real presence and the fervor of de devotion toward the Blessed Sacrament in the hearts of all members of the Church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who celebrate birthdays, those who celebrate anniversaries, including Jack and Marcin Molusky, those who serve in the military and their families, may be filled with the warmth of God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are sick, including Janice Lytle and Wendy Redderath, may perceive in the, persevere in the running the race and receive renewed strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, including Bruce Ferguson, brother-in-law of Teresa English, may enter into the reward of eternal life, and may their families and friends be comforted by God's kindness in this time of sorrow and sadness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, these are our needs and prayers we place before you today. We also remember the soul of Roger Cassette, for whom this Mass is offered. We ask that you hear and grant them according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our youth are invited to bring their gifts to the altar at this time. Please join in singing, Seek Ye First, number 442. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us, the Redeemer, to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we spread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and John our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with your spirit. and let us offer to one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those of you watching on local access and social media, we offer you the following prayer. 
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please join in singing Seeds Scattered and Sown, number 330.
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. You may remain standing for a few announcements. First of all, uh, if you weren't here last week or the week before, Blessed Sacrament is hosting a blood drive on Thursday, the first day of September. So it's an easy day to remember. September 1st, from 2 to 6 p.m., you're invited to sign up to donate either on the website or call the parish office. There's a catechist meeting on Wednesday, August 17th. Uh, though Monday is August 15th, uh, normally it's a holy day, but since it falls on Monday, it's not an obligation. In fact, since it falls on Monday, we don't have Monday Mass, so there won't be any Mass on Monday. The ministry schedule for September and October is available on the table outside the parish office. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thank you for being a part of the Eucharist this evening. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Please join in our sending forth hymn, Lift High the Cross, number 715. a few times, but I think... <laughs>